what an amazing machine. This is a Tesla Model S 90D. And for those of you who've never experienced it, what can I say? This is probably one of the coolest cars you'll ever drive. What's unique about Tesla is that much like Apple a few years ago, Tesla is a game-changing brand. Game-changing in the sense that for hundreds of thousands of tech-savvy consumers out there, this is the motoring innovation they've all been waiting for, and it feels brilliant. No doubting the reality, electrification of cars is happening fast, and with even more exciting and affordable models on the way, it's just a question of time before more of us are charging up our batteries rather than filling up our tanks. I like its performance, uh, it's quick and it's comfortable. I like the autopilot because when the traffic's really congested you can you still have to concentrate because it takes over some of the driving. Um, I like the fact that it, uh, it isn't missing any carbon dioxide and it isn't costing me anything for fuel. The reason for going for the Tesla obviously was mainly for the tax reason first of all, but after I drove the, the new one, which this is, um, it's been a fantastic piece of kit. Uh, and I wouldn't go back to a, a fuel fuel car. And I like the electronics on it, the um, the all the gizmos, you know, the big iPad. Uh, I've got the full sound system in it. I've got the window pack on there. It's just a great car. When you're in a tricky situation on the motorway, if you need acceleration, you have it. Uh, I think I'm helping the environment for our next generation children, and hopefully everyone will follow suit. Well, what's clear is that Tesla are setting the trend for electrification and getting a great deal of attention too. A whopping 325,000 consumers have already pre-ordered a Tesla Model 3. That's $325 million, and all for a car that as yet nobody's seen. Accenture is a global professional services company and provides strategy, consulting, technology and operations services. James Hallam is MD of the fuels resale practice covering Europe, Africa and Latin America. Okay, electrification I see is very much part of the changing fuel mix that's happening at the moment. Um, you know, we've got biofuels, certainly we have hydrogen as well, but I think electrification and electric vehicles is a reality now and it's one in my mind that will only increase. I think the interesting bit about it though is how quickly will they come. I think it's a real, it's a real mix and we have certain countries like Norway where I think it was last year 22% of all new vehicles were electric but then there are certainly other countries where that's you know, a much much smaller percentage. So for me electrification is a reality, it will increase, the question is really how fast will it increase. There's a word that, or a phrase that we're hearing a lot banded around in, uh, in the industry, uh, fuel disruption. You know, how much is disruption a challenge to the fuel industry going forward? Well, I think it's going to be an enormous challenge. Again, I think there is an element of timing to that disruption, but I think it absolutely will happen and it will have a profound impact on a number of players in the industry. So there's various factors as well I think that will influence that. So as batteries become cheaper, as the range of electric vehicles grows, we will definitely see it increase. I think additionally, customer requirements and customer needs will be changing and there is a definite growth in people understanding that electric vehicles are a good thing for the environment. However, I don't think you can mention the customers without also mentioning the fact and the power of government in this. I think government is going to be the major factor in actually speeding up or slowing down the introduction of electric vehicles. But then when I apply that to fuels retailers, for example, well, if there is a vast increase in electric vehicles, then they're going to have to look very carefully about how they serve their customers, what products they sell, and actually how they configure their overall sites. The 
It was only back in 2007 that Apple launched this, the iPhone. Whoever would have thought what an influence it would have had on us today? And that's why we need to keep a very close eye on Tesla. That very special brand of innovation that they bring is something we're going to have to watch very closely in the future. I think the way it's stitched together the different bits of technology, there's nothing in there that's completely revolutionary. There are loads of batteries, there are loads of sat-navs, there's speed adjustable uh, cruise control, but the way that it links all of those together to work is quite clever, and it's probably as a result of not being designed by a car company uh, that's been set in its ways. Uh, I like the fact that the suspension goes up when I get to a bumpy road, and it'll automatically do that. It seems to have been quite well thought through. I believe absolutely that electric, electric cars are going to be a big thing in the very near future. I think it's something for the future. We are the pioneers now. Uh, in five or six years' time, everyone will drive an electric car. A number of players across the globe are absolutely looking at electric vehicles and understanding what is their future business model going to be? How can they serve their customers differently? Um, a nice example would be, well, if you have an electric vehicle coming in to charge and it takes, well, let's say 30 minutes for a Tesla supercharge, then what the, what's the customer going to do for those 30 minutes? How can you service them better? How can you meet that customer need? The dwell time, for example, um, I think we look at where we are here today, people sitting down, eating food. That needs to be very much considered as, a, as an advantage and an opportunity that can be taken. Um, particularly with food venience and offering something for the customer that meets their need within that, say, 30-minute window. So, looking at growing electrification of the vehicle fleet, um, what are the implications for petrol station owners, convenience store owners going forward? Well, growing electrification is going to have a profound impact on those businesses. Now, that impact may not be felt immediately and it will be a gradual change, but it will absolutely come through and will change. What we will definitely see, though, is potentially a reduction in the number of vehicles coming through. Now, you can charge your electric vehicle in multiple different locations. However, what you also need to consider is the impact on what that customer wants when they arrive at that service station. So there will be a much, much greater focus on the convenience and the services that are being offered by the petrol retailer or the convenience retailer. So you need to be a destination for all of those things, uh, irrespective of the, of the fueling issue? Com completely, and I think that's exactly the word. You do need to be a destination. And it's not just a destination for someone who wants to do fueling. If we look at the trend about the rise and rise and rise of convenience, you need to offer that convenience service, be that with food, be that with convenience, or be that with an auxiliary service that you can provide. I used to dream about cars like this. Incredible, isn't it? Suddenly our dreams are fast becoming a reality. And even driverless cars are on the horizon. Whatever next. I'm Dan Munford for Retail Vision. Thanks for watching.